What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here. Good morning to everyone out there. It's a good day today. The sun is shining. West Ham in the mud and Spurs got off to a very, very good victory yesterday. 3-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium against West Ham. And you've got to say, I mean, for the most part of that game, there was really only one team in it. Um, you got to say that. I thought Spurs, um, they gave a really good game from the first minute. You saw Spurs were on it. But I would say uh, to West Ham's defence, they did look very leggy uh, throughout that whole game yesterday. And that definitely played a factor within the game. Um, in terms of the West Ham fans, I thought it was the quietest West Ham away end that I've ever seen uh, come to Tottenham yesterday. I don't know what was going on with them, um, but it was just a good day all in all yesterday. And I had a smile on my face uh, throughout the game. The atmosphere was absolutely incredible. Um, but what did you make out of the game yesterday, Sim? Yeah, it was a great day. Um, spent it with a lot of YouTube friends. You know, saw, saw them a lot before the game. Um, a lot of our, uh, you know, Danny Kiriakou and David Harris and Jack Kinecki, all these people. Uh, it was great. And Sean Butler, it was uh, his birthday weekend. So how the, start, the day started off great. And then, then the match lived up to it, thankfully. And I think from start to finish, we were pretty much in control of the game. Mm. I felt there was maybe a five... Uh, five minute period in the second half five ten minute period where West Ham just after making a couple of changes they seemed to up their energy a bit and it looked like um, they were coming into the game but once we rode that period out um, it was it was all Tottenham really and uh, they all they had they had that set piece which they scored against run of play um, the only the only um, nervy points were just from the simple fact that we hadn't extended our lead beyond 2-1 and as, as long as the game is only at 2-1 you know it's uh, that West Ham are a bit of like one set piece away from getting back at the game that was what was causing a bit of nerves and you sensed the relief it wasn't necessarily like obviously we're happy when Son scored it just to win the game but I think it was more just relief more than anything that we'd finally got that goal um, uh, right at the end to, to seal the three points which you could feel around the stadium and I think we deserved it um, West Ham for sure in the last 20 minutes tired you could see that they could they, I thought they, had I thought they looked leggy in the first half I was looking at the game in the first half and I was thinking this isn't a usual West Ham team I mean I thought they looked tired even in the first half I I think they got the system wrong. They played three at the back, and I think um, I think we just we 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 know that system better than they do, and I think they just got that completely wrong. I think once they moved to four at the back, they looked a lot more they looked a lot better and a bit sharper. But once we adapted to that, um, there was only it was it was only one way traffic really, mm -hmm. and I think we uh, pounded them into submission pretty much throughout the game. I think um, we were. We were on it. We were sharper. We wanted it more. And yeah, I think. I'd, but I think for the last twenty minutes, their energy was gone, like completely gone. They didn't have any. They they couldn't push forward. We just penned them in for the last for the last bit of the game. And um, I would uh, interesting to see what the what what are the possession stats because I feel like maybe we made them do a lot more running than I'd have liked to yesterday. Which uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let me see if what what the possession stats were like because usually in this kind of game. We yeah, fifty three percent possession. So we had more possession than them. Um so that's probably usually a situation which they would like, but when they're two nil down for most of the game, when they're chasing it, that's gonna they're gonna have to expend a lot of energy, aren't they? And yeah. Uh, and that's what I said from the beginning of the game. I thought the early goal was imperative yesterday to make them do that running. Sorry. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Scored two goals early, uh, really. And then obviously they get a goal uh, with the only way they know how to score a goal from a set piece. And terrible defending once again from that set piece. But what I want to say is actually yesterday um, in the ground, coming into the ground, the atmosphere, mm. um, not even before the game, was absolutely electrifying. And you've got to say that the fans definitely played their part yesterday with with uh, cats flying everywhere within the stadium. That was brilliant. Um, it was a sight to see. And I, and I actually felt coming into the stadium a sense of togetherness um, and an energy which I haven't seen at Spurs for quite a while now. Um, I felt that energy yesterday. I, really I, felt, I feel like in like Antonio's first few games, you might have heard, you might have felt that as well. We were the, 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 there was a good feeling coming back at Tottenham. And then obviously, well, since the inconsistent form has been um, coming in, then uh, you know there's been uh, they, they, that's kind of gone a bit. But I think the form has turned around now. I think it's like four, four wins in the last five now in the yeah. Premier League. Um, so that I think we are starting to get a bit of consistency now, especially in league form. Um, the goals are flowing uh, for sure. Ever since that um, league. Leeds game was it uh we scored four against Leeds five against Everton uh we also got two against um United United we got two against Brighton we got three again yesterday we also got three against City as well not so long ago so we're starting to get goals on a regular basis now I mean a lot of it's coming through Kane and Son but um 
we're starting to we're starting to look like a proper attacking threat, and that's the that's is really really positive. I think the wing backs um, are co um, maybe not they're contributing goals and assists, maybe not as regularly as we hope, but they're definitely being more of an option. They're definitely getting in the right positions that we need them to get in, and that's opening up spaces. And um, I, I think that uh, it's very very positive at the moment. And it, <clears throat> with nine games to go. Um, we're coming into form at the right time, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, some performers on the pitch yesterday, I thought there were some really, really strong performers on the pitch yesterday. First one I want to talk about is Cuti Romero. I mean, what a performance from him yesterday. I mean, Antonio did not have a sniff the but, whole game pretty taken much. off after 55 minutes. Exactly, taken off after 55 minutes. And I thought he was an absolute beast. And if you ca cast your mind back uh, to the last time we played West Ham, when uh, Romero was making one of his first games for Spurs, um, he was up against Antonio and had a really hard day. I mean, he did well and he stood up to Antonio that day. But Antonio did win a few of the duels with him that day. But today, yesterday... Not one, I, I remember, not one. And what's really good about Romero is when he does have a lapse in concentration or when he does make that mistake, straight away he makes up for that mistake. Straight away he's running back and winning that ball. And when the ball comes into any attacker, he steps out in front of him, wins that ball. He's got this kind of tackle where he wraps his leg around the defender as well and wins the ball. I mean, the guy is absolutely um, a beast, man, a beast. And um, who was it last night on Match of the Day was comparing him to uh, Virgil van Dijk, Ashley Williams, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Um, and that's uh, praise of the highest order. Yeah, I mean, Van Dijk's a bit a bit different uh, to him, but um, I think in terms of uh, quality, or not quality, but in terms of um, just the, the the profile of defender, I think what Romero is different is he's he's always looking to win the ball first. He's always looking to nick the ball off you. He's not waiting for you. He's coming for you. That's the difference between uh, Romero and uh, like uh, imagine we had Romero last season. Would have been a, we. I reckon we could have got top four if we had Romero last season. Um, uh, in our in our back four in in Mourinho's team because we just had a bunch of defenders last season who were always waiting for oppositions, always reacting, um, always seeing what the opposition striker is going to do and not um, uh, and not actually being proactive. And that is the biggest thing that Romero's given to us. And not only that, when he does nick the ball, it sets us up on the attack. He. Um, he uh, he gets us into the transition. He always takes the ball in his stride. I feel when he wins the ball as well, and and it gets the a lot of the time it catches the opposition off guard and off balance, and it gets the ball to the um, forward players very very quickly. He didn't do too much of joining the attack as we've seen recently, but he can do that as well, and that's also a massive positive. So uh, he's getting better he and better. To do that yesterday. He's just getting better and better, isn't he, is, he Romero? He is. As 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 time goes on, and he's so composed without him. Um, we just lose a massive element to our back four. And, even, and I know Dai again had another very good game, but he just adds something that no other defender uh, that has, that, that, you know, yeah. in, in our squad. And, and, you, and you know what? He, he adds something that no one else in our squad can, can bring, and so does Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer also uh, in the middle of that back three adds something that no one else can bring with that leadership skills, with the organising of the defence, um, you know, with being that calming presence in the middle of that back three. No one else can bring that in our squad. Um, but Hyung Min Son yesterday, back back to one of his best performances, I believe. I mean, he was grabbing the ball, he was running at the defence, he was causing West Ham no ends of problems. It was his kind of um, his um, you know making himself a nuisance that caused Kurt Zuma to score that own goal. Uh, obviously, he got the other two as well. So I mean, I thought Hyung Min Son was really back at it yesterday. Yeah, and you know, you know, there were moments yesterday where his touch was a bit off or. He uh, um, he wasn't able to be as as, as, as clinical as we'd, we'd hoped him to be, and, and things like that. But one thing you know with Human Son, he his touch might be off sometimes, his finishing might be off sometimes, but his movement is always absolutely spot on in every single game. His his movement is world class, and he always knows where to run, how to get on the blind side of the defender, um, how to get them on their wrong foot. And again, yesterday he was getting in those positions, and he and he got his reward. Um, his link up with Harry Kane was fantastic. Um, I think he was getting in those central positions, which was so hard to track. He, his timing of his runs, especially for the first goal, absolutely impeccable. And the finish got a bit of luck with it, with the uh, deflection, but still um, was a, was a good shot and it was a good it was a good finish. And then obviously the second one needed composure right at the end, and a lot of people were calling for him to come off at that point. But it shows why um, you keep a player like like Son on because. 
he's got a deadly finish on him if you get him in those positions and he can be the difference maker and he has been so many times now and um, that carries on his in, you know despite people saying his performances are bad he, he's got a good run of form at the moment mm. in, in, in terms of goal scoring I think that's nine goals and, and, and four assists or something in his last uh, second top goal scorer in the league in now as well in his last 13 games and yeah only Salah has more goal contributions he's up to 13 goals for the season um, two, one, two good finishes one on his right one on his left and he's so ambidextrous we know that about Sonny and obviously the, the first goal as well he put Zuma under pressure forcing him to put it in his own net so fantastic and he's got a pretty good record against uh, West Ham doesn't he I think mm. it's uh, six does, goals in nine they, games they must be the sick to the sight of him seriously. definitely, definitely. Um, and another player who I really want to talk about and wax lyrical about is Rodrigo Bentancourt because mm. I thought um, obviously he responded really well uh, to that poor performance at Old Trafford with a really strong display uh, in midweek against Brighton and I thought, um, again, he was absolutely brilliant. Calming presence in the middle, strong in the challenge. His passing range was on show yesterday. Um, he was central to a lot of things that Spurs were doing going forward. Had his hand in the first goal, I think, as well. Um, so, oh, was it the second goal? To oh, yeah, yeah this pass was Kane for the second goal. It was absolutely um, so, yeah, inch perfect. Second goal. Um, I thought, again, um, a, a display worthy of a man of the match again from Rudo from Rodrigo and I think the man of the match you could have easily given it to four of either Romero Bentank or Son or Kane I thought all four of them were absolutely sensational yesterday yeah and Hoiberg as well I think that I think that they're developing a really great partnership yeah a really great partnership uh, together they're, they cover a lot of ground it shows the difference um, when Hoiby has a partner who's actually willing to put as much work as he does into the game, like it's it's so such a difference. They do we dominated the central area, and uh, everyone who said this three four three can't work. We don't have the the players for it, and you know even we've criticised this formation. But it shows with two real hard working midfielders who cover a lot of ground and have a bit of quality about them as well. Um, this absolutely can work this for this formation and we, and yesterday Declan Rice struggled badly um he I, I didn't even think he had a bad game necessarily I just think he got out outworked like I, don't, I think he had too much to deal with with those two centre mids I think he couldn't get he wasn't able to um uh like uh, show authority in the game because Hoybier and Bentacle were closing him down every time they were winning the tackles they were charging forward Hoybier was robbed of a brilliant assist as well um, for, after Kane blazed over that chance it was a really brilliant dink ball in from Hoybier which um, should have uh, uh, given us um, the third goal a bit earlier uh, Bentancor He'd had those uh, trademark charges up the pitch, um, especially in the second half where uh, we set us up on counter attacks. And he just, there was that one moment as well, which is, shows the confidence of Pentacle on the edge of the area. Two players coming at him um, from, from behind, one in from in front, one behind. And he just goes in between both of them and then plays his way out of trouble. I mean, those are, those are moments where you're like, oh, sometimes you've got to be safety first. But he has the confidence to do it. He has the quality to do it. And uh, if he doesn't get caught, it, it looks absolutely brilliant, doesn't it, mm. from uh, Rodrigo. And he's I really... I my heart in my mouth at that moment, though. Right at the edge of our box, he's doing this, like, pirouette to get past two West Ham players. Luckily, they both went the wrong way. Uh, but I, I had my heart in my mouth at that time. He has moment. the confidence to do it. And in his performances like yesterday, when he's really... When he shows that confidence and authority and he... And he, and he he takes on responsibility, which I like from him, but he has to do it more often. And uh, but I just think him and Hoybier at the moment are playing very well together. And I'm very, I'm really happy with um, the way they're controlling the central areas, and it's allowing us um, a bit to be a lot more confident when we attack to have the defenders, to have the wing backs flying forward, to have that front free, and then on occasion you got Bentancor and Hoybier as well um, getting in there, and also Romero. So. It adds a lot more confidence in our back line when you've got them two there. We just look so much more solid. Mm, completely agree. Completely agree. And um, look, it was just... Um, I felt like yesterday um, was a step, a massive step in the right direction of what we want to do. Obviously, this game would have been earmarked as one of the hardest games uh, throughout the rest of the season. Obviously, we've got West Ham, um, Liverpool away later on in the season. But apart from that, when you're looking at our fixtures, you're thinking that we should and uh, we should be able to go on a really uh, a run now. Uh, we really should. And when you're looking at the top four race and you're looking at Arsenal, Manchester United and the fixtures they have, we've got... We've got a much more favourable set of fixtures than them, don't we? 
yeah, into this. Yeah, definitely. I think we definitely have the more favourable set of fixtures, but we've got to take advantage of that. Um, we also do, just like Arsenal now, we only have one game a week, so we have time to prepare, we have time to concentrate on each fixture as it comes, and hopefully I'll benefit us massively. Um, I think at the moment, as much as Arsenal are playing well and in good form, they're playing good football, but we're the ones scoring the goals at the moment. They're kind of winning by the odd goal in most of their games, yet we're kind of winning 4-0, 5-0, 2-0, 3-1. Our, the, we've won four wins out of five, right? And I think all of them have been by more than a goal, haven't they? Yeah, and before those five games, we were like, what, 11 goals behind Arsenal now or something two. like that? And now we're two. So uh, we are closing the gap here. We really are. And I think that... That, that goal difference with that has pretty much been wiped out. Yeah, it's been wiped out. Yeah, yeah, it has been wiped out. And, you know, you've got to look at it. And I've had uh, texts from Arsenal fans. I'm hearing stuff from Arsenal fans saying that, um, oh, after looking at the fixtures, Tottenham are favourites for top four now. Tottenham are favourites for top four. Well, that's what they think. Well, <laughs> I don't know about favourites, but definitely it's going it, to... The, with the fixtures now... You know, um, and I think finally we're going to start putting uh, real pressure on Arsenal. What the the big thing is, obviously Arsenal they played first this weekend and they got the win and we responded. But next week, if we beat Arsenal by um, Newcastle by more than um, by by two or more goals, we go above Arsenal. Now being then, then they got Palace away. I, th I don't know if it's Sunday or Monday night. Um, they got Palace away the next game, and we could be above them. So it'll be very interesting to see how they respond once they've got the pressure on them, like knowing, OK, we have to get something now because our, we're, in, we're not in top four anymore. We're, mm. uh, we're, we're being overtaken. We've got you know, Tottenham up our asses and, and putting real pressure on us. It's going to be very interesting to see how they react. And if Palace put in a, in a display like they did against Man City last week, you know, they're very good, good form. Good chance they can get something out of that game. They're they're very really good is. form, Arsenal. And Vieira as well is going to have the motivation um, for sure. So it's going to be very interesting to see. I think top four is going to be a very interesting battle. I think obviously Man United as well out of the Champions League. Um, we are above them. Same games played only by a point. So they're definitely in there. But they also got very tough fixtures. They've got Liverpool away still to play. Um, they've got, you know, they've, got, they've also got uh, West Ham. They've also got Arsenal away. So look, there's a lot of tough games for forever. I think we've definitely got the easiest run in out of all the teams. Mm -hmm. But it's whether we can just keep our consistency. Um, it's a big question. Obviously, we still got to go to Anfield. But the thing is with us is... You know, we've played Man City recently. We've played Liverpool under Conte, and we've played very well in those games. So th those games, as much as I'm not expecting to win it, they almost don't scare me as much as some other games do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that Liverpool game definitely uh, scares me the most out of anyone that we've. Got of course, left this it does. Season. But we've shown, unlike United and unlike Arsenal, we've shown we can go toe to toe with these teams. Yeah, but I, you know, with Liverpool. I know we can, but I think that, you know, in that time of the season with three games left to go, I think we go to Anfield away and it's going to be a massive game for them. Mm -hmm. I just, it's, it's going to be so difficult, that game. It really is. But that, that could play into our hands even because we know that they have no choice but to go for the win and they're going to come right at us. And that's exactly what they did at the lane. And if they're going to keep two defenders at the back and with Kane and Son there, we know how to hurt them. Problem is we don't have the we might not have the passing ability that we did in that game with Winks and Ndombele who are very good passers. We're gonna have what we probably had That's yesterday. But anyway, I'm just saying it's not a given we lose that game given how we've played against big teams. That's my point. Mm. So like I I back us more against these big teams than that Arsenal and United. Um, well, it's a shame that, you know, it's the international break now, as Conte was alluding to in his press conference, being like, you know, starting to suddenly we're coming on form and the international break is going to hit us. And I mean, it's so important now, uh, this international break that we come back with no injuries. I know Romero's gone out to Argentina, even though he wasn't called up in hope that um, that one of his games get uh, suspension gets overturned, yeah. which is really annoying. Uh, so we got players flying all around the world. We that's to do with the quarantining though and all that. Stuff yeah, that's rubbish. true. But the, you know, we just got to hope that we just come back unscathed because any injury now on international break could really derail us. Yeah, because we're in good form and I think we've got a really very settled starting eleven now, and it's going to be very difficult if, if players start getting injured. Um, you know, we know the quality coming in usually isn't as good, especially if very few key players like Son or Kane, um, if, they, if they get injured, you know, Kane got three assists yesterday. Um, if, if, he, if he gets injured, we're in big trouble. Um, so that's going to be a big, a big. Uh, we have to see how we are, what we're shaping up on the international break. Arsenal as well have a lot of players going away. So they've also got to be careful because they've also got quite a thin squad, but we got to focus on ourselves and hopefully we come uh, come away unscathed, which we've got to hope.
Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you agree with him then? It's coming at the wrong time then. Probably because I think well, yeah, I think we we want to pl- keep playing more games at the moment. The way we're playing, yeah. we're playing really really well. We're playing, we're pressing well. Even in games like United, where you know we lo- we lost, I thought we pressed really really well. We had the control of the game. We're we're starting physically to know exactly where we're going and how to gain control of matches. And then 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 it come then it comes onus on us to make sure we that we when we take control, we know how to deal with having control. And against United, maybe we could have done better. But the other games have been been pretty good all right i'm pretty happy with that all right so that is our match preview uh match review spurs three west ham one at the tottenham hotspur stadium yesterday which is an absolutely lovely day all round um had a really good day yesterday (laughs) 